Namaste beautiful yogis. Today I am sharing with you my um, story of how I became a yoga teacher. Someone requested it and I thought, yeah, over the years a lot of you had asked me how I became a teacher and I have never shared the full story, obviously, because it is, I can't write it down in comments. I have to sit down and explain the story. And maybe next video would be my tips of how to teach yoga or how to inspire your own self to become a yoga teacher so let's get into my story now and I hope you enjoy it I'll start with um, how I first I even got into yoga so uh, over 10 maybe uh, close to 15 years ago I um, was living in Vegas and I was rock climbing and just uh, doing different things but I had never tried yoga up until this point and um, I think as a child, once or twice, I became curious about the ancient yogic techniques um, that were kind of more mystical, about uh, shutting down your vital organs for extended periods of time and, and such things. You've heard those stories where they can slow, lower down their heartbeat so low that they can basically pretty much hibernate and such stories I have such, uh, heard such stories as a kid and they sparked a little bit of curiosity in me or a lot of curiosity but at the time there was no access to any information so that was just kind of in the back of my uh, mind I never quite delved into any type of yoga as a kid or a teenager then living in Vegas rock climbing Yoga was kind of popular amongst rock climbers because it balances out your muscles and it makes your climbing better. Um, I was curious about it. I was reading down the line every book in the natural department, alternative healing department library and I grabbed, before a snowboarding trip, I grabbed Christy Turlington's um, autobiography, uh, autobiographic book. I will list it below. I forget the exact name. Right now, it was 15 years ago and um, I grabbed that book for the car trip to uh, we we're gonna go snowboard from Nevada to Utah so um, it was a long ride uh, I was going there with my partner at the time he was driving and I <laughs> figured out read books so on the way there so uh, the book was so <laughs> interesting I think I read the whole book in one or two days and uh, it was so fascinating so i figured well as soon as i get back uh, home i am trying yoga for sure <laughs> and um and uh, yeah we got home uh, a few days later it was a three-day trip uh, we got home uh, a few days later i grabbed the dvd there wasn't much access at the time you know yoga seen 15 years ago especially in vegas was it wasn't like today let's just say that it was a it was a completely different thing. I grabbed the DVD. I want to say it was something Ashtanga or a very intense Hatha, my first DVD. And I can track it down. Uh, if I sit on a computer, <laughs> I will track it down. Uh, it was actually my very first was um, a very intense uh, Hatha yoga sequence. It wasn't even a Vinyasa. Uh, and um, I fell in love with it. It was something that my body uh, thought it's familiar. It was something uh, that I, I, it felt like second nature to me, something so familiar, something I've been doing all my life, right? Because innately the yoga moves are something that is designed to suit our body. It is, it is very uh, suited for the human body. Plus, who knows, maybe in previous life some of us have done yoga. I have no idea, no attachment to either theory. It's just that I did yoga and from the very first moment I did yoga that was it I was like oh yeah I get it this is this is something I totally understand I get it it flows for me so I started practicing a lot and uh, I was practicing for two three hours a day and within a short amount of time I was doing some very crazy for me poses touching my head back to my feet and such things that is just uh, more flexibility based things that it just I was getting into through intense breathing and basically you know if you've ever had intense yoga sessions and I'm sure if you're on my channel you have had plenty of intense yoga sessions you know the feeling of lightness 
that's like no other feeling it just there is no pain in your body your body is light and fluid and open and just you feel lighter than um, ether like light, lighter than air in your body there is just a sensation of absolute lightness in your body after yoga and your mind is on a completely different level so I was practicing uh, through the yoga and I think I want to say that very quickly after I started doing yoga not only did I fall in love madly with yoga but I said to my partner at the time I want to be a yoga teacher now that is a very silly naive thing to say for someone that had just started yoga because I don't know yoga but I get the essence of yoga within my higher self I get that but I'm new to yoga and at the time yoga was a vocation it wasn't like someone that is just gonna teach you how to uh, get a tighter butt and how to do a few poses and how to get a sweat on it was kind of like a, something that a wise person would be doing right so it was just kind of a naive thing of me to even um, dream about and I must say that I wasn't like the type of person that would constantly want to do different things as, as soon as I pick them up uh, I had only previous to that wanted to be uh, through all through my um, childhood and early teenage years I wanted to be a painter and I painted a lot and a little later into my teenage years I wanted to be a designer because I had a wild creative mind and I loved to draw to draft things so those were the things that I thought probably I will become and prior to yoga I was deep into I was studying herbology and I was studying the healing arts so to me I knew I had this strong sense of purpose within myself always or since I became spiritual in my late teen years I had this quiet but strong sense of purpose within myself and I couldn't quite tell you what it is but I had a deeper than words understanding of purpose so a lot of you would um, relate to that it's some connectivity with higher self with oneness with divinity that is just a deep sense of joy and purpose within yourself and you know that there is something higher uh, within this existence other than just uh, achieving a few things within with school and work and family and then dying right so there is a higher purpose <laughs> I'm getting, uh, I hope I'm following a straight line here with this story. Uh, so, um, uh, so basically he kind of laughed and he said, oh, uh, he, he said no way, basically. And I don't think it was because he wasn't supportive or anything like this. It was just because it was such a naive thing to say early on into picking up yoga. So anyways, I continued uh, practicing. I don't know if I uh, thought to myself I will become a yoga teacher or I thought I won't that was just out of my head I was just practicing with passion there was a fire and full-on obsession and passion so that was great I continued practicing later on uh, years later we broke up and I moved back to LA and um, I basically when I moved back to LA I started thinking how can I uh, figure out and take time off of work I was working jobs and being very excited to be living because I love LA I did love Las Vegas because it has amazing nature and amazing magnetic field to it but if you've never been in the nature area the desert around Vegas you wouldn't know what I'm talking about because you would think oh Vegas casinos but there is another side to Vegas that is just oh I love it anyways so LA an exciting time for me also stressful times for me because as you all know change is stressful letting go of certain things you thought in your head are going to be a certain way in your life and just a complete change but also excitement about the new about so within all this excitement I, um, I started thinking oh I have to get a yoga teacher certification I gotta start an herbal company I, w I wanna do certain herbal formulas that are completely new stuff like this so that was my mind frame as I was working other jobs within LA and Lily uh, so um, 
So I have now not one, but two dogs in the house. So if it's extra noisy, it's not just Sophie. Sophie's actually right here, super quiet next to me. But we have another, her friend is over and they tend to get very noisy in the heat. Uh, so that's the noise. Months later, uh, after I had lived in LA for a while and uh, been just uh, doing my yoga and just living life and being excited, I go on a date with this guy and um, uh, I don't know if it was um, uh, on the first date or um, a little later on, but we immediately connected with him and later on <laughs> He's still, he's still in the picture, um, but as, as we immediately had a connection and I told him, I want to be a yoga teacher, and he's like, you're a yoga teacher, <laughs> and I was like, well, no, I'm not a yoga teacher, but I do want to, uh, you know, be one, I just feel it within my, in my bones that I want to be a yoga teacher, and he's like, you're a yoga teacher, so I don't know what he meant, I think obviously he meant you, you you have the thing of a yoga teacher or the or of a yoga teacher or something like this he meant he meant something that oh when i look at you i see you as a yoga teacher not as someone that wants to be one but you already have it or something like this anyways it was very encouraging he recognized something within within me that was my dream and my passion and he was with no question you are a yoga teacher right and on top of it he also had this idea that he will be making yoga videos and uh, uh, he would start a yoga production company but uh, so basically we meet and we have that kind of common dream and as soon as we meet within maybe a month or so we went on a across the country trip and uh, we shot yoga videos and we uploaded that that is 11 10 years ago we uploaded a yoga video which immediately got 10,000 views and back then on YouTube there wasn't such views on YouTube you know it 10,000 was like millions <laughs> in today's numbers it was just uh, it was just it became very popular but when we got back to LA we both got very busy with life he got very busy with filmmaking I became very busy with started a yoga teacher training and uh, uh, other I was working other jobs at the time so we became busy and kind of the videos were dropped to the sideline um, so as I mentioned as we came back I started looking for a yoga teacher certification I found I went uh, to meet with someone that was offering classes nearby me yoga somatic breathing classes uh, vinyasa and such uh, classes uh, I went to meet with her Anita De Francesco and uh, she uh, I started a uh, teacher training with her she also did the same thing she's like oh you're a yoga teacher you just you know you have it so that was encouraging those were the first kind of signs or encouraging kind of moments that i had uh, in my first uh, baby steps uh, into teaching yoga that were encouraging i had people tell me oh you 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 are and also my own inner obsession with it so um so i finished the yoga teacher uh, certification and I got my certificate so now I have to apply for jobs right and I'm brand new to it you know that just uh, getting a yoga teacher training doesn't really really prepare you for teaching yoga you know that the real certification comes from you teaching hundreds and thousands of classes and that's where your real training uh, happens because theory is one thing but practice and understanding the art of teaching not just the theory of yoga and anatomy but the art of teaching and flowing and all of that it's a, it's a whole nother story so um, I started applying for jobs I got uh, some small jobs at some small places and gyms and such things and I continued applying for jobs and I got um, I got a call back from someone that I knew about someone that was one of the founders of power yoga one of, of the people that uh, was the pioneers of power yoga 
uh, Mark Blanchard. So I got, I got a call back from him uh, for an interview. So I go to the interview and uh, I really want the job because it's a power yoga studio and I already was uh, teaching power yoga. The interview was very different from any other interview. He actually had a bunch of us in a class and I think all the people that he was interviewing and he or the people that he approved for the interview and he uh, basically taught a class and wanted to see our attitude during class. He was big on attitude, smiles, all of that and um, just kind of lightness uh, during yoga and kind of being able to flow and and take a challenge and take a different direction during class and just he had his own ideas about interviews so I took the interview it was fun I fell a few times in different crazy poses and so forth and I laughed and I I got the job so uh, both uh, so three of us um, that were in the class or in the interview uh, he hired us and now he said you're going to be on the sub list so now i'm on the sub list on this in this like awesome studio it was called progressive power yoga in brentwood <laughs> and uh, which is a really cute neighborhood in la but i still didn't have a permanent class or anything like this or i have never thought thought in his uh, studio so uh a few days later he calls me or his um secretary calls me and says uh, can you teach Mark's class of course I go yes I I will take the class of course and I'm like oh this is going to be interesting because it's the first time I'm teaching in such a studio and it's the first class I'm teaching for him and I'm I'm substituting for him and people are coming specifically for him because he has guru-esque status and people are in love with him he has all these uh, students and followers that he was uh, he was legendary uh, so they're in love with him and he's just a firecracker and i'm going to be teaching his class as a brand new teacher just i just got my yoga certificate right and uh, by the way that was my first yoga certificate of 200 hours so uh, i show show up in the class and the room is packed just you know 30 people waiting for Mark and it's me. Of course, a few of them got um, disappointed because they're expecting Mark and uh, I taught the class, it went uh, well, it was fine, everything went fine, everybody got a good sweat on and it was fun. Of course, I'm sure nowadays I'll teach it in a completely different way and I, I know a, a different way of teaching, but it, it was fine. It wasn't a total failure or anything, it wasn't a failure. Uh, shortly after that I got uh, classes at the studio and in shortly after in his other studios and I stayed with uh, his uh, studios for many years and it was one of my biggest um, learning experiences because I, I taught so many classes in this uh, studios in many locations by the way and uh, four locations all together uh, plus, I did get other jobs in really epic, iconic, historic gyms in LA. They're, they're just like, uh, if, you've, uh, if you've lived in LA, you would know those places are just uh, iconic gyms. So I was teaching these awesome classes with really cool groups of people and it was just uh, kind of a magical experience. Teaching for Mark and taking the classes there constantly and just being in that environment was such a uh, learning experience for me because he has a, a unique style of teaching which is extremely creative and extremely powerful and extremely, um, you can't expect exactly what's coming. He would just shock you with inappropriate comments or he would just say things that you wouldn't expect in a yoga class. So it was kind of out of the box experience. And he had a genius about teaching yoga, which I highly appreciated. And I learned a lot from about just flowing with your creativity, finding uh, not overthinking things here, but flowing with your body, with your creativity, finding finding the movements from your body because your body body will guide you. And a lot of the classes would feel when you do this it would feel like dance. It would feel like the most natural move instead of this stiff, perfect poses, which a lot of the classes prior to me working with Mark 
and Anita were just more stiff, more perfect, more rigid yoga, more structured yoga. And all of a sudden I find this, this place where things just flow from the gut or flow from your higher you or you're just downloading the moves and you're, you're flowing with the energy of your body. Your body is guiding you and there is no thinking. And his classes were always this, you would never uh, hear a joke said twice because a lot of teachers would teach the same sequence every single time and they would even say the same jokes every single time in every single class and there is nothing wrong with that for people that like this type of structure and uh, repetition but for me it was magic to just find an absolute creative river, fountain. So um, I learned a lot from uh, there and um, I had a lot of fun through the years. Uh, later on, many years later actually, I stayed with them for many years. I don't remember uh, even after I got sick you can check my healing story, but I got very sick and I couldn't teach anymore. I still continue teaching some classes without, of course, showing things. Uh, but I hung on to some classes as I was, as they were trickling down, as I was giving up classes. There still would be a couple of classes here and some classes for beginners, something like this. So basically, finally, my uh, me getting sick with uh, toxic exposure and being completely very sick. I had to finally, after years of holding on to a couple of classes here and there, just give it completely up. I knew within myself that in order for me to open a new door, I have to completely shut an old door. I can't just hold on to bits and pieces of it. And I thought to myself at the time, oh, I don't want to give up my classes because if I don't teach, for two, three, four, five years. I will forget how to teach, right? I will not remember how to teach. And I spent all these years developing, doing this as a job and developing this as a possible future path for me. And if I give it up, I had the fear that, well, I'm giving it up for good, forever. And an inner voice within myself said, yes, that is the, that is the task here, to give it up and trust or to give it up completely not to hold on to things and say well I will give it up but hold on to it a little bit or no just let it go let it go don't worry about how it's gonna work out or if you're ever gonna teach yoga again if you never teach yoga again be at peace with that decision let it go so finally I gave up the maybe uh, he, actually, he has to he had to close his studio, and I was still teaching a few other classes in uh, areas uh, close to where I had moved, more towards the valley. Uh, so finally, I gave up the last few classes that I was teaching, and it was a big decision. It took me years and was very painful. But the voice kept saying, "You gotta let it go, girl. You gotta let it go," and. Um, as uh, difficult as it was, I also had this confidence that I gotta let it go, right? Because there is such power in being able to let go of things, even of dreams, when prompted to, when life tells you to, or when you get the signs and the signals and the messages. So I completely let it go and I was happy about it. I actually uh, temporarily started a business, I think for a couple of years, that was a lot of fun because my dream was always to work for myself, to have some form of independence and to just have a creative or uh, a certain way of working that is not uh, structured. I, I don't follow a routine 9 to 5. Or, um, I just flow with my own uh, biorhythms, right? And uh, ways of working and I have my own ways of doing things and creating new ways of working. So I started a business which was a lot of fun and it was a learning experience. Now there is a barking dog in somewhere in the neighbors. It was a nice learning experience. I always, even towards the last years of teaching for Mark, I had already come up with the interval yoga idea. I was doing it a little bit at home. Uh, but I wasn't teaching it as much. I was try I was actually teaching it. I must uh, say that I was teaching it, especially in one of the downtown studios. I started teaching it a little bit and in a few other studios. I started teaching it a little bit and everybody loved it. 
uh, but I was just a little bit insecure about bringing such an intense element to just a classic yoga studio or to a classic yoga style, let alone to a more beginner uh, places that are more gym-like. So uh, in neither studios, no gyms would vibe with it because gyms tend to be a little more beginner uh, yoga students. And basically it wasn't something that uh, was gonna just be easy for me to uh, establish. So basically while I was having my business, I was having the extra time to heal and I uh, started to brew back the idea with my partner now. I mentioned him in the beginning of the story when he said yes, you're a yoga teacher. Now again, that idea of back then when we shot our first few videos and they had this uh, just interesting success. Now again, it started to brew about YouTube again because back then it was still YouTube, right? It was like the very brand new YouTube. I've loved YouTube as an educational source since its very beginning and um, information of education source. The idea started brewing again. I was having extra time. I really was healing real nicely and my strength was coming back. And that idea never left. It was just left on the back burner, right? The idea came uh, to ripening. I wasn't sure I want to do it immediately because uh, YouTube has a certain level of exposure that you have to be prepared for. And uh, there are certain things that you have to give up, not big things as a yoga teacher, but there is a certain level of privacy or a certain level of uh, anonymity or certain things that are consideration when you put yourself and your likeness on camera. But uh, at the same time, it's not a, a big um, sacrifice because you are, when you're coming with the passion and with something that you need to share, uh, that overtakes everything else. So we started and the more, I, I knew at first that I would have to start with a little bit more vinyasa, classic vinyasa yoga classes, which are still probably everybody's favorite. But I knew that at, for, at first I would start the channel with something more um, um, traditional so that later on I can incorporate this new to everybody thing, interval yoga. But as I incorporated interval yoga into my channel, there seemed to be actual craving for it, actual void for that, that type of intensity. Because my vision of yoga, um, the way uh, I came up with the idea, it was a very natural uh, progression, is um, yoga is a perfect way of movement. Yoga can maintain your body in, uh, in perfect supreme health and your mind, but and your emotions. But there was some a missing element in yoga and that missing element in yoga was cardio even i had read an article years ago that yoga teachers even though they are super fit they still can suffer from heart disease because they don't do uh, cardio and their doctors tell them to run and i'm like that doesn't make sense they're doing yoga for an hour and 40 minutes a few times a day some of them uh, teaching in uh, their personal practice between teaching and their personal practice and they still have to run, it's just, it doesn't add up. I love the gym, I love uh, sports, I uh, love um, I love running and in junior and in uh, junior high, I think, I don't know how you uh, rate those schools in uh, America, but in junior school, I was a runner, I had talent in sprints and in marathons or endurance running and in college I actually signed up for the marathon team I had I was just a runner I'm, I'm, I've always been a runner good runner fast runner so running was something that I felt that I actually had an innate talent in and I loved it but to me running it's very repetitive, very dangerous for your body. It can throw your entire system out of balance. And also, once you hit a certain age and running on asphalt and all of that, just becomes not an optimal way, something optimal exercise for every day because it can put a lot of stress on your knees. And there is exceptions. If you're running, don't get discouraged as long as you don't have any pain. Your flexibility is okay. You don't feel aches and and you're not doing it just to maintain your uh, weight but you're doing it for uh, overall health and mind and so forth and your body feels light and healthy then you're fine just FYI 
if your knees are hurting and you continue running, maybe reconsider. Understanding that there is a missing element in yoga, I knew that I have to add something to yoga so that we get a full form of uh, exercise and mindfulness and meditation all in one that can save you time and give you what your body needs. Lightness and fluidity in your body. And just letting go of rigidity, finding strength, power, explosiveness, balance, flexibility, calm, calm state of being, um, focusing on the moment, empty mind, breath, all of those elements combined in one. And without doing an hour and a half, because when I go, went to my healing story, I did have to heal adrenal fatigue, and in, in general I had to re, uh, build my hormonal system from in, in a very natural way. I used absolutely not a, a single Advil through all the years I, he, I had to heal from a gnarly, gnarly toxic exposure that broke down my entire system into a, a, every uh, autoimmune symptom you can think of. And I opted out. Basically, I chose the completely natural route. I don't think, I, I have not taken a single aspirin or Motrin or uh, Advil or anything like that. So I figured that the optimal way is not an hour and a half every single day. And I created those more impact routines that you can do on a daily basis. And you can have a weekend or a, a few weekdays of a longer class. That's fine as long as you're not exhausting yourself, running yourself into the ground. You're good. Anyways, that was uh, the whole idea behind Interview Yoga. I'm getting a little bit distracted. That's how I became uh, a teacher and how I found uh, founded my uh, style. Also, an interesting tidbit of information is when I first uh, started yoga, uh, um, or I don't know if it was when I first started yoga, but Yoga Works became um, corporate at some point, and they had those corporate interviews for yoga teachers and I went on one of them and they never called me back I didn't get the job and um, basically the thing is don't get discouraged when you get turned down or um, it just happens and I I'm sure I didn't fit into their model because my view of yoga was probably a little bit a little bit different from the corporate view that they had at the time but unfortunately I didn't get the job and that was okay I continued forward and things progress in their way the way they're supposed to I hope this story was interesting I think it got to be a little bit too long I hope I hope you learned a little bit more about uh, me and I'll try to give you tips of how to find the inner confidence to be a yoga teacher next namaste <laughs>